I had a pretty scary experience with my husband. This happened about a year and a half ago. I've always been a huge paranormal fanatic. I would always find places to go explore that were known to be haunted, which means I have a lot of stories, but this one is by far my most scary. In my home state, there's an abandoned asylum on the outskirts of downtown, in a pretty sketchy area. The building was originally a mental health facility in the 40s, and was eventually made into a drug rehab center, and finally a boy's home where it would eventually shut down in the 80s. It's a relatively small building, only two stories, and maybe eight rooms on each floor, and one large room on both floors on the far side of the building, all windows busted out. The building has a history filled with tragedy and has a well-known reputation to be haunted. I've been to the building on a handful of occasions, but had never been on the bottom floor due to flooding. I had never had any experiences there except maybe a feeling of unease. There was a day I had asked my husband if we could go. He was hesitant at first as we had been there a few months before. We usually went every six months just for fun. But he eventually agreed and said he wanted to go at 3am. Me being me, I agreed with him. 2am rolls around and we're at the asylum with our baseball bats. For protection. As I mentioned, in sketchy areas occasionally we'd run into homeless sleeping there. So it's just a precaution. I also had brought a Ouija board and an EMF reader. This time that we visited, the water on the bottom floor had drained out and I was very excited to finally go down there and explore it. We started upstairs and swept the whole building, making sure nobody was there. While sweeping the bottom floor, I didn't have any feelings of unease, but I was a little freaked out to see satanic symbols and dead birds on the floor. At this point, I had figured that the downstairs hadn't been flooded for a few months, as there was a lot of graffiti and the dirt on the floor was dry. We started on the upstairs with candles and the Ouija board, and tried to make contact for nearly an hour. Nothing. Nothing on the EMF, nothing on the board. At this point, my husband and I are just bullshitting around because we weren't expecting anything to happen, just having fun. We moved downstairs and by that time it was about 3am. I was feeling fine at first and we did a few sessions on the Ouija board in different areas of the lower floor. I had asked to stay away from the large back room as the satanic symbols had made me uncomfortable. After the sessions, we walked around with the EMF detector and I noticed it was only spiking in the spots we had the Ouija board sitting. My husband and I were pretty weirded out, but we just kind of blew it off and thought there was maybe an explanation. My husband decided he wanted to go to the back room. I said it was fine as long as he stayed close to me. We made it a little more than halfway when I started to get a gut feeling to not go any further. Every hair on my body was standing on end. I told my husband that we needed to go and I noticed he was on edge as well. I ended up running down the hall back to the outside alone. It was unlike me to go anywhere alone in the dark as I'm terrified of it, but this feeling was too much for me. When my husband and I were both back in the car and I had calmed down, he explained to me that he had felt the most evil feeling or presence he had felt since a previous haunting he had dealt with. We were both pretty freaked out and decided we were done for the night and wanted to go home. About three nights later, I woke up in the middle of the night to use the bathroom. When I was coming back from the bathroom, I had a weird feeling, but I wasn't completely awake so I ignored it. When I reached the bedroom and closed the door behind me, I saw something out of the corner of my eye. I looked over to the corner of our room and I saw a hunched shadow figure, not much taller than my 5'4". I stared for a second but told myself I was half asleep and went back to bed feeling a little uneasy. About a week later, my husband asked to talk to me. He told me that he had seen something in the bedroom the night I had gotten up to use the bathroom as I had woken him up getting out of bed. He began describing what he saw and I was in utter disbelief because we had both seen the exact same thing. When I asked why he didn't say anything that night, he said he thought he was imagining it. 
Needless to say, we were both scared shitless after that, and I think our fear fed more into the situation. It went to us seeing the figure almost every other night, our ankles being grabbed, and things being moved around and found out of place for the next few weeks. There came a point when I was so fed up that I smudged with two different smudge sticks and very angrily told it to leave us the fuck alone. After that, it just went away. Gone. Like it never happened. To this day, I believe it followed us home from the asylum, as we have never had issues in our house before and always left the Ouija board in the car. I had a strict rule about it coming into the house. Do I think the spirit was the same entity we felt that night? No, but I definitely felt it came from the asylum. I think this was a spirit that just wanted to mess with us, nothing malevolent. To this day, we haven't returned to the asylum. Even thinking about it over a year later, I can still feel the pit in my stomach of when I felt that evil entity that night. Okay, so all of this happened between the ages of 7 and 10 for me. I'm 21 now, and still wonder what was happening to me. When I was young, I was really tuned into the paranormal, and that since has faded. For a few years, things were really crazy for me. From seeing things to hearing voices, and feeling a lot of strong and unexplained emotions, plus really scary and vivid dreams. The first time this specific thing happened to me, I was probably seven or eight. So how this experience would start would be I was in bed trying to settle down for the night and I would have a really bad feeling. I would eventually fall asleep and wake in the middle of the night with a feeling of complete terror and having a tingling sensation all over my body. Here's the catch though. What would wake me up would be the sound of someone digging through the toys in my closet. Terrifying. So when I heard the noise, I would get out of bed and start walking to my parents' room. But the moment I would make it halfway across my bedroom, a large black figure would lunge at me, growling very loudly. I always had a nightlight, which was how I saw it. Every time it lunged at me, I would immediately pass out and wake the next morning on my parents' bedroom floor. This continued for a few years, about three times a month, and didn't stop until one night. I just didn't get out of bed and laid there, until the feeling of terror subsided. To this day, I'm still incredibly traumatized about it and think about it happening every night before bed. I also believe this is what caused my extreme fear of the dark because before this, I could manage without a nightlight. I've tried Googling this, but never figured out what it was. I considered sleep paralysis, but I don't think that's what it was because I could move. My husband thinks it was a demon because he experienced something similar in his teens when he had a demon living with him. Every year, when we get the first solid snowfall, I head out to the trees beside my in-laws house to get my pine boughs for my Christmas wreaths. To give some context, my in-laws live in a rural area on 100 acres. When you go up the driveway and kennels are on the right, there's a barn straight ahead and to the left is the house. The house has fields right beside it and they extend back behind the barn. There's a huge bush, 20 to 30 acres of trees at the back of the field. If you walk past the house to the left, you can walk along the edge of the field. The field drifts to the right and to your left it is a small patch of dense trees and a pretty steep embankment down to the road level. I packed up my dogs, Kaiju, Echo, and Kivli, three Alaskan Malamutes. You guys thought they were instrumental in my making home safely from the last time I was out in the forest, so I bring them with me every time I go out into the forest now. Kaiju is a big guy, weighing about 120 pounds. Not a chunky guy, this is just a solid dog. Echo has grown up a bit since our last outing and is almost as big as Kivli now. I get everyone out of the car, and since this is a family property, they know very well and they all have fantastic recall. We go off leash. I brought an offering of tobacco, as suggested by my dear friend who gave me some incredible insight, 
from an indigenous Canadian perspective. I made my offering in a safe place where my dogs wouldn't find it and where other animals couldn't get to it and listened as I was instructed. I didn't have any feelings of immediate fear or anxiety, so I thanked the forest spirits again as instructed and we made our way down to the pine trees. I cut my bows from the bottom of the trees and made sure to only take what I needed. I tried to take the branches that are blocking out the smaller trees growing under or near them. I was putting my cuttings into a bag when I felt like something was off. Keiju, who normally does his usual perimeter to pee on every tree in sight, was sitting no more than five feet from me, facing the tree line on the embankment, totally still. So still that snow was collecting on his fur and was totally undisturbed. This made me take an inventory of my dogs. Echo, who bless her heart, is a total spaz when she's off leash. She has to be running absolutely everywhere. It's like she's afraid she won't get to see everything unless she runs everywhere as fast as she can. She was also sitting completely still, directly beside me, staring towards the embankment. Kivli was the furthest away, maybe 10 to 12 feet, standing, head low, ears up, tail straight down behind her. I immediately thought it must be a deer. There's a heavily used, well-worn game trail down here, and these guys love to watch the deer. I still have a nagging feeling something isn't quite right, so I pack up a little faster. Then I hear it. Kaiju is growling. Kaiju never growls. He's a giant teddy bear. The scariest noise he makes is a Chewbacca sound, and that's just adorable. But now, he's definitely growling. Kivli is circled back, head still low. If you need a visual, think stalking wolf. And she's grumbling too. Echo is now standing up, hackles up, baring her teeth. Message received, kids. We're out of here. I grab my bag, check my exit options, and start walking briskly towards the closest trail up the embankment. Keiju's up front, Kiv and Echo on either side. And I realized the trees are silent. No birds, no wind, no nothing. It's like we're in a sound vacuum. Kaiju is now stopped dead and is staring straight down. There's a skull. Not sure what it is. Could be a deer. Could be a calf. Honestly not sure what it could be. I have photos to help hopefully identify what it was I was looking at. In a link below. In a small, shallow, for lack of a better description, grave. No other bones. Just the skull. A very clean skull. Kaiju's growling again and he's got his teeth out this time. I noticed up the embankment there was what looked like a makeshift shelter. This shelter was directly overlooking the hole with the skull in it. All of my dogs are losing it now. They're full on howling now which is being answered by the other three dogs up at the kennel. It was eerie. It was like they were trying to call for reinforcements. I got an overwhelming urge to be still like something was trying to wrap me in a blanket to hide me. All I could get out was the word knack, night in German, which is what I usually use to tell my dogs to watch me. They all stopped howling, but hackles stayed up and low growls kept going. As soon as the blanket feeling was gone, we ran. I've been to that cluster of trees a hundred times. I've never found bones of anything down there. I've never felt like I'm being watched and I've never been scared to be there. We regularly plant new seedlings down there and clear out the grapevine from the older trees so they don't get choked out. We put out peanut butter pine cones with bird seed for the birds in the winter and keep the hunters out of that area so the animals have a safe place to rest. To preface this story, I live on a dead-end street that's tucked away by several side streets. Never any issues with break-ins or anything. I'd always been hearing footsteps at night around that time, either in the hallway or the attic. Had previous paranormal interactions at younger ages after deaths in my family. I was not well connected with these people. But late summer day, 14 years old, sitting in my living room doing my summer reading. Only one home is my older brother in our room, which faces our front yard. 
Living room and kitchen are connected, and my house is not very large. So let's say the window is about 20 to 30 feet from where I'm sitting. The kitchen window is also facing my front yard, and I live in a one-story house. The house is dead silent. There are no lawnmowers or anything going outside. Sun's out, maybe 2 or 3 p.m. A picture-perfect summer day. I remember it so clear because right as I was shaking off that uneasiness of being alone, I hear from my kitchen window, hey. I look up in disbelief, thinking at the time no way I just heard that. The voice was what I would describe as demonic for lack of better words. At least Tom Waits with a deep pitch voice changer. I try to shake it off and no more than two to three seconds later, the initial hey is followed by another hey this time more loud and seemingly more aggressive. I'm frozen now, thinking possibly a home invader is trying to mess with me or something. I'm looking at the windows after the first hay as well, so I thought maybe they were crouching below the windows. As petrified as I was, I was still in disbelief. After the third and final hay, I told my brother immediately there was someone outside of our house. He sweeps the windows with his bat in hand, nothing. Not a trace of somebody walking through our bushes. Nothing. Since then, I've had minimal paranormal experiences. I wonder if hearing or seeing an apparition is worse, because from my experience, hearing those three haze was enough for me to never forget how terrifying these experiences can be. I was an 11 year old skinny kid, prude and self-conscious. One summer day at my family cottage, I went to bed in my jimmies with about half a ton of bed sheets on. That night, I remember thinking the mattress wasn't comfortable at all and woke up to a half sleep state a few times to change position. At one point, I felt the bed was ridiculously hard and it woke me up for good. I noticed I couldn't see the nightlight that was always on. Then I realized I wasn't even in my room. I was laying totally naked on my back, outside on a big flat rock, like some sort of offering to some god. I was so scared I froze stiff, couldn't move nor utter a word. I wanted to scream, but nothing came out, which got me even more scared. As I got used to the darkness, I saw I was less than a hundred feet or so from the cottage. I closed my eyes, concentrated, and when I opened them again, I was able to move. I quickly got up and walked, couldn't quite run, to the house. I remember the cold dirt under my feet, but I had no feeling of the temperature outside at all. I tried opening the door, but it was locked. My mum always locked the door at nights when my dad was away. I had to go around, but the back door was also locked. Fortunately, the window was opened and it was about two feet up the deck. I got back in, slipped in my bed and prayed nothing had followed me through the night. I woke up later than my brothers and sisters the next day. They hadn't noticed I was naked in bed. I would have never heard the end of it. Couldn't find my jimmies, so I got into my jeans and grabbed a t-shirt to join them for breakfast. Later that morning, my older brother, who was playing outside, called my mom to come and check out something. We all ran to see what that was about. He pointed high up. As I looked, I immediately recognized my pajamas hooked to the highest branches of an old, very tall tree. They all looked back at me, asking what the hell? And I didn't have a clue. Everybody denied having anything to do with it. To this day, I was at total loss to explain what happened that night. I'm an 18 year old male. I live in Chatham, Illinois, just to help create a map of where certain things may reside, for those interested. I see myself as quite a logical person, more so than most. Though sometimes when my mental health is suffering, I become more prone to being willing to accept illogical beliefs. Though these periods are typically very short lasting. These experiences listed below happened years ago, and I've had plenty of time to think about them logically. I'll try to keep them concise. This was a few years ago, Chatham, Illinois, spring. My house was largely surrounded by woods, 
but there were larger areas where there was grass that we mowed as well. There was a long grass area from our house all the way down to a lake. Each side of this grass patch was covered by woods, one side more than the other. At this time, I would typically walk to the lake, alone, every day around 8 to 11 a.m. I would just look at things, do miscellaneous things, hang out. One day, after being at the lake, I started walking back up to my house. Then I heard someone or th something ruffling the leaves on the area to the side of me, in the woods line. I looked ov over only for a second, and I saw something big and black. They were tall and had thicker limbs. I didn't look long enough to get any smaller details. Possibly it was a Bigfoot, possibly it was a Dogman, or possibly it, they, were a person in a costume suit or in weird clothing. Those aren't typical clothes for this time of year. No one should have been at this location. It's private property. All of my close neighbors are above 50. The closest is much older. Right as we saw each other, it, they started running. Not necessarily away from me and deeper into the woods patch, but they started running along the woods line. I then quickly bolted back to my house, told my dad's friend that was staying there and went back out with my phone whilst recording a video because I figured no one would believe me. I didn't catch them on video, nor did I see them again, despite going out again multiple times. Even alone, late at night, with no phone. They may have been silently watching me at the lake for some time. I, for sure, saw something out of the ordinary. I'm just not sure what. This was many years ago. I was at my grandparents' house, Mechanicsburg, Illinois. They're Christian and go to church every Sunday. They have many little things all over the house, artworks, artifacts and whatnot. One day, me and my little brother were staying over at their house. I was staying in the guest bedroom. My little brother was staying on the living room couch. So after everyone had been asleep, including me for hours, I woke up in the middle of the night to crying sounds coming from the living room. I went out there feeling a bit off and saw my little brother was crying. I asked him why and he said he saw, he said something. I don't remember his exact terminology. Was running up and down the basement stairs. This caused me to be more frightened. I stood there for a minute, then out of the corner of my eye, just looking barely enough to see some of it, I think I see something in the dark kitchen and it moves over to the basement door. If something was there, I only saw part of it. A long skinny black slash ash colored arm. That was the part of the thing I may have seen. It freaked me out and at that time I cried in fear. I eventually went back to the guest bedroom, locked the door, and prepared to defend myself in case I needed to. I eventually fell asleep. The next day, I asked my brother about it. He said he was just messing with me. Weirdly though, everyone was asleep, not just me. So I don't understand how his crying could have been to solely target me. But possibly, though I figure unlikely, he meant solely about the stairs comment he made. Also, when I asked him why he was crying, he immediately said something was running up and down the stairs. That's a pretty bizarre thing to immediately come up with, especially when under emotional distress. So I figured him messing with me was unlikely. If I actually saw something, I have no idea what it was. There is little place for something to hide in that house. Maybe if it did exist, and if possession is a thing, it possessed some object and came out of it and got a kick out of messing with people, but it didn't want to be caught messing with people. My grandma, who lives at that house, has many, many paranormal stories, but we all think she's a bit nutty. I don't know for sure what actually happened in this experience. I think my older brother has told me about some of his experiences at my grandparents' house as well. Chatham, Illinois. I've had many experiences of hearing my name being called but I think most people have, and it may just be the brain making it up. Outside, at night, in empty places, I've heard a baby crying. I've heard people yelling help and other similar things. Also in the day, from a storm drain pipe that drained into a stream, I've heard some things. 
I've heard stories of beings that call out your name or call out for help. Though this could have just been a hallucination or a mishearing or something else or an actual sound from something but it was just a normal person doing a normal activity. Divinan, Illinois. I was a young child, two story house. One day, me and my older brother heard people walking all around and talking upstairs on the second story. We were downstairs in the first story. No one was upstairs. Everyone was downstairs sleeping except for me and my older brother. We were awake. This could have been a hearing of ghosts. I've heard of many similar things happening. The house belongs to a church. It was right next to a church. Though it could have been a two-party hallucination or something outside that sounded like it was coming from upstairs. I've heard talks about that house having black mold, but who knows? I figure this was a genuine experience. I've seen many weird shadows and things out of the corner of my eyes, but I think everyone does. And the human brain naturally does this. And it's nothing paranormal, at least the majority of the time, maybe all of the time. Uncle's wedding spot. I touched some black powder that was in a bowl at church. I felt a weird jolt through my body. I'm not sure what that powder was for. Ash Wednesday? Or why it made me feel like that? Streaks of light in the sky, spots of light. Explainable as space phenomena, aircraft, satellites. So who knows? Memory of being in a room as a very, very young child. An aluminium or aluminium coloured room. There's a thought in the memory of it being an alien craft. Possibly, after seeing the room, I turned around and saw an alien. This was very likely just a memory of a movie I saw or something that's happened before. Old watching of movies and similar things may sometimes get mixed up into my personal experience memories. Especially as when I watch movies, I invest myself in them so much and live every experience the main character lives in my mind. I recreate their pain, emotions, everything. I think more so than the average person does. I've had weird dreams. Aliens, powers, interdimensional travel, etc. Separate dreams, or different. Most likely nothing quite paranormal, just some very odd dreams. I honestly feel like I have more experiences, very big ones, but I just can't quite remember them. I can feel them there, I just can't quite grasp what they are. I do suffer from DPDR, or a long-term general dissociation, which means my memory is shot at the moment. Maybe I'll rewrite this if my condition ever goes away. In my backyard, my dad has a woodworking shed, the size of a small barn or big shed, about 30 to 50 yards from the house. My dog hates the shed. He cries to get out of it because he hates it so much, so you have to pick him up and put him in it, but close the door really fast. Also, he's a lap dog, very tiny. Also, when you walk into the shed, it's a big rectangle with the long sides perpendicular to the door. There are windows on the left and right side of it, but not on the wall where the door is and the back wall. Plus there's a huge workbench in the centre of the workshop. Okay, so this happened between November 28th and December 4th, 2020. I can't remember the exact day though. One night my sister, we'll call her Susan, went into my dad's workshop at about 8pm. Pitch blackout and far from the house with all of the house lights off because our parents were asleep except us two. She was painting a cooler for her boyfriend at the time, but needed it finished by tomorrow because she was leaving early to return to college. Since it was her last night and I wouldn't be able to see her for two weeks, I decided to go in there but not help. When I got in the shed, I was surprised thinking, wow it's cold, and how the heck did she get dog's name in here? Well about an hour after I had our dog on my lap, we were sitting very close to the back wall with a two three gap between us, listening to Mr. Ballin on YouTube. Hindsight 2020, that definitely didn't help. I get this super strong whiff of freshly lit cigarettes, which wasn't too odd. My dad's a smoker, so growing up with him I've learned and know the difference in the smells between old and fresh cigarettes. But I thought I should mention it to Susan because it was really strong. Yo, Susan, 
I just got a super, super strong smell of fresh lit cigarettes. What the heck? Who cares? Dad smokes in here all the time. What's your point? Okay, chill. I was just saying. Thought I should mention it because it's weird. Not even 15 minutes later, my dog is still sitting on my lap. Sits up and then starts aggressively growling and barking at the windows. Keep in mind that it's pitch blackouts and you can't see out the windows because the shed lights reflect off the windows, making them like a mirror. Then my dog hops off my lap and starts to run around the shed, continuing to aggressively bark and growl at all the windows. Susan and I are terrified because he's never an aggressive dog. Also, if we would tell him to stop barking, he would instantly stop. But as we were yelling at him to shut up, he just wouldn't. Finally, he stopped running around the shed, looks in between us, like in the perfect middle of us, and starts whimper whining defensively, but growling too at the wall that has no windows. Susan, what the heck? What the heck? What the heck? Stop it now. I'm not leaving now. I'm too scared. Me, silently crapping myself and visibly scared. No, nothing is going on. Let's just go inside, Susan. I promise nothing is going to happen to us. Before we go inside, we gather all of her painting stuff and cool her. I grab a super long screwdriver, then hype myself up in my head to open the door. 30 seconds before I opened the door, a super cold airflow entered the room, and I knew it was a sign of a ghost, which made me want to get inside now. So now my 20-year-old, 21-year-old sister makes her 16-year-old brother protect her, act like the older sibling and go first. Later found out she thought either her or me. I turned off the lights which caused my bad anxiety to go to the worst anxiety I've ever had built up and getting ready to explode. In the blackest of black darkness, with my eyes not adjusted, thinking I'm going to die, I slowly opened the door with it creaking unbelievably loud. I had the screwdriver held like Cod's knife commando grip, and looking so slowly around the door, with Susan holding on to me, literally shaking, and my dog, who's ready to run to the house. I thought I saw something, so told Susan to book it. We closed the door and ran into the house, turning on all the kitchen lights. We get inside and Susan says, Oh my God, where's the dog? Now I'm afraid that my dog's dead and screamed, Oh crap, probably outside. We called his name with the door cracked open for about five minutes, but he wouldn't come. So not wanting to, but wanting my dog to be safe. I convinced Susan to come with me to check the shed. She wanted me to go on my own. Unwillingly, she came with me to go look. I was still gripping the screwdriver like a knife because I could feel something out there. We get up to the shed doors and open it. My dog is there with his tail down, not wanting to leave it. He hates it in there and won't leave, meaning whatever was there followed us. I picked him up and ran back into the house. When we got back inside, we realized that all of the lights that we turned on were now off. We couldn't have turned them off because of how scared we were and our parents had fallen asleep. I locked the door and sprinted upstairs. This was from 8 to around 10 or 11 p.m. More things happened that night, but I didn't experience it because it was in my sister's room. I have more experience if you guys want to hear them, let me know. Also, I bleeped the words to make them more friendly. Plus, this is probably obvious, but I'm 17, and my sister is 22 now. It's my second experience. My best friend and I lived 10 years in a village. When I was 15, my family moved to a small town near the village. It was okay, because you had to walk only 45 minutes. Between these two places, there was a forest. Every time one of us had to walk there in the night, we called each other. It was a short but creepy street with a large dog, forest animals, and sometimes drunk people, and we felt safe while walking. One day, it was deep in the night. He called me again, but it was different. He sounded scared, and I heard some kind of laughing in the background. I asked him what that was, 
but he didn't want to talk about it. He only asked me to tell him something so he didn't have to think about it. As he walked, the laughing didn't get silent. It's only a five minute walk in the forest, but it had to be less loud. Till today, we have no idea what that was. Some people say it could be a bird or some other animal. I know some animals around very strange at night. I live in Germany, so there's no mountain lion thing or tropical bird. The laughing had a sound like someone mixed a witch and a psychopath. Some details could be a little different. It's been like eight years. Never heard something like that again. I went to the birdcage theatre in Tombstone earlier that day, then returned to my hotel over a silver mine. Around 2am, I awoke to a flashing light. The front door is lateral to my bed, and its window has a curtain over it. The tiny space between the curtain and the window sheds light right into my eyes. Then, there was an urgent, quick, yet muted knock on the door. Around 8-10 to 10 knocks in very quick succession. Then the door handle started to turn back and forth aggressively. Luckily, it was locked, and I thought it was an intruder with malintent or someone who was lost looking for the other apartments on site. Then, I heard the sound of an old clock's second hand start ticking away in the corner of the room next to the door. I remembered there was no clock there, which I confirmed in the morning. The second hand continued for about an hour, I got out of bed during this time and peeked out the windows. There were no lights outside, no sign of cars, no footsteps circling. It was extremely cold, even though the heater was on pretty high. I got out of bed pretty quickly after the intruder heard me grab a weapon to defend myself. There were no other sounds, like footsteps or anything, except the clock continued. I was sure it was a human. But everything about this seemed too weird. Like I couldn't replicate the knock sound on the door or the walls. And the handle turning only sounded the same when I tried it from outside. There are security cameras, but I haven't heard back yet as to whether someone approached the door seeking entry. The weirdest part for me was the sound of the clock. Because that is the only thing I cannot explain if it were a real person. There's a lot of superstitions where I'm from. One of the famous ones that many believe in the Philippines is that when someone dies, a moth visits and they say it contains the spirit of the dead or an ancestor. Years ago, my wife's grandpa was not looking well anymore and they worried he might die anytime soon due to his sickness. He spent his final waking moments at home, laying in his bed and having his family say their goodbyes. A few hours after everybody did so, he passed away peacefully. My wife's aunt broke the news to everybody in the house, and just as they all gathered in his room while waiting for the morticians to come, there was a big moth that had entered the room, without anyone noticing, and it remained there throughout the night. Some say that it's their grandpa, as the belief goes, but another weird thing happened right after he passed. As if in unison, the dogs in the neighbourhood started howling for several minutes, as if the moth wasn't creepy enough. The next day, just when neighbours started to learn that my wife's grandpa passed away the night before, a neighbour and friend of the family came to them and asked when the grandpa passed away, and when he learned it was the night before, he couldn't believe it. He told them that last night, he saw their grandpa walk out of the house with a little girl holding hands with him, although he never saw the little girl's face or where they were going. Oddly enough, when my wife's grandpa fell ill some time ago, he told me a little girl visited him and kept telling him to come with her, but he never would. Not sure if that was the same little girl that the neighbour saw, but it was eerily coincidental. I don't really know what category my experience would fall under. 
But earlier this year in summer, I had a really strange experience when I went out fishing that I've never really been able to shake off. It started off normal. It was a warm, windy day with an overcast. I was making my way to a fishing spot that was just out of town. This place was an open beach that is located at the mouth of a river. It's quite the hot spot during summer, so there are always at least a handful of people fishing in the area. But when I arrived, the beach car park was completely empty. This really didn't raise much concern because at the time I went on a Tuesday and assumed most people would be at work. However, I've fished on other weekdays and there's always been at the very least one or two people fishing. Anyways, I continue on as normal and cast my fishing line. Around 45 minutes go by and nothing happens. The sounds of seagulls and albatross permeate my surroundings. But then I get this growing feeling inside me that something was wrong. It felt like I was somewhere where I shouldn't be. The best way I can really explain the feeling is like the same you get inside of an empty mall or walking down a really long hallway or as if you just trespassed somewhere, if that makes sense. This is where it gets really weird because the wind then suddenly drops along with the sounds of the wildlife, like a switch. All I heard was the sound of the waves, but something wasn't quite right with that either. It was like the same wave sounds were playing over and over again. The best way I can explain it is as if a small piece of time had been sectioned off and it was being played in a loop. At that point, I was really startled when I noticed this and the same feeling at the start was growing more and more. It hadn't even been a whole hour and a half I was there and I decided that I shouldn't stay there any longer and noped out of there. Now I don't know if I would consider that as a paranormal experience per se, as you could argue that everything that happened was just a string of coincidences, which is possible, but I just can't get over the abrupt halt of the ambient wind and sounds that to me was the really strange unnerving part about the whole experience. As a disclosure, I'm skeptical of ghosts now as a grown adult, but I've recently started becoming more interested in the supernatural again. And I remember experiencing things in St. Augustine as a child that still make me feel a little uneasy to this day. My friends insisted they'd truly seen spirits for themselves with their own two eyes. But perhaps the oddest part of all was that even professional adults working at this school as teachers, public safety officers, dormitory supervisors, etc., also said they'd had experiences on the campus, like seeing doors slamming out of nowhere. In general, we were never told by the adults that ghosts aren't real, ever. Instead, we were told that there was no reason to be afraid and not to let such stories or sightings bother us. My first year at the school, I lived in a dormitory for girls in grades six, seven and eight, which was supposed to be very haunted. I occasionally felt as if someone was watching me when no one was around and often felt cold currents of air at random during hot, sweaty months during the dead of night in a room with no air conditioning. The latter was probably just external airflow making its way inside via cracks or gaps in the walls. But my roommate and I were still terrified at the time. I still remember that more than once I'd end up not sleeping at all and relating my fears at breakfast the next morning with the staff working the night shifts. I was told to never go to the bathroom on the first floor during the night. This wasn't an issue because I only lived on the second floor, but there was a famous sighting of a ghost of a person with a broken neck and my friends claimed that they'd seen the apparition as well. Once, during an unrehearsed fire drill one evening, a few girls told the dorm supervisors they'd just spotted someone in one of the windows and they were too terrified to go back inside. I know they weren't deliberately trying to find an excuse to not go back indoors because some of them had only towels on from being caught in the shower when the fire drill first started. When the supervisors did a head count, no one was missing. 
Despite this, the supervisors looked worried, even as they told everyone to go back inside. There were constantly strange smells around the school that we couldn't place, and rumours of deaths on campus, such as a blind girl who died from horrific burns in the shower long ago, or a woman who was murdered by her mother. Some of these stories were even told by the adults who worked on the campus. So, truthfully, while I may be skeptical now, I've had enough experiences and heard or seen enough from others to still feel that there's a window of possibility for there being more to reality than can be understood on a mortal level. I think if I hadn't ever lived in a place like St. Augustine, I'd be a lot more closed off to the possibility of such. And if I had lived there longer, I only attended school there for a total of three years. Perhaps I'd have eventually seen something that would have made me be a believer for good. So for background, we live, rent, in an older house from the 1930s. And we moved in October 2020. My husband was deployed until the end of November 2020, so he wasn't there at first. It's two stories with one bedroom, living, dining, kitchen and bathroom upstairs. And a finished basement with a bedroom, bathroom and storage room. Our daughter sleeps upstairs and we sleep in the finished basements. I'm a huge skeptic and I don't quite believe in ghosts. But I definitely believe in demons because of my religion. For this reason, I'm pretty freaked out by the paranormal. When I moved, my mom and dad helped me move in. They lived pretty far, so they stayed a few weeks. My one day, my mom asked me why I was pacing the house all night. I told her I heard it too, and it must have been the pipes creaking. This is a regular occurrence in our house, and it really freaks my mom out, but I attribute it to wood floors and old pipes. My mom comes to visit in May, and we take a trip to see some family. While I'm gone, my husband tells me how terrifying it is to be there, alone with the footsteps. While he's downstairs, he hears pounding on the door. He grabs a gun and runs out, but there's no one there. I'm under 30 seconds. It's almost impossible to get out of sight of our door, between the busy road and two large parking lots. Strange but he dismissed it. We got a ring camera. A month later, there's pounding at our door again. A month later, there's pounding at our door again. Our blink camera registers absolutely nothing. Or maybe the Wi-Fi wasn't doing well since my husband was gaming. We figured maybe it was the back door and we mistook it for the side door. This was pretty hard to explain away, honestly. A few months go by with nothing. Then, while my husband is out hanging out with some friends, I decide to get in the shower. The shower is directly under the dining room. I hear the chairs scraping across the floor and assume our robot vacuum has started and maybe my husband put it on a schedule. So I check our indoor camera and find the robot sitting in the living room. I go check and see two chairs have been moved. Thankfully, my husband is almost home and he calms me down. He tells me the chairs might have been out of place before my shower and maybe the sound was air in the pipes. No big deal. This is an old house after all. Then earlier, I was sitting in our recliner with my daughter, who has a kraut. She's passed out in my lap. It's a heated, vibrant recliner, so it's on and it's not exactly quiet. My husband went to Walmart to get some popsicles and shower steamers, so it's just me, the baby and the dog. I see what I think is my husband creeping through the dining room, and I hear him messing with something on the table and maybe with the door. Then my husband texts me, I'm checking out at Walmart now. So I'm panicking, but I don't want to wake my daughter. I still can't hear it moving around. I think maybe it's a mouse, but I know that's ridiculous. My dog lifts his head up and looks into the dining room. He perks his ears and stares for about 30 seconds and then puts his head down. I felt better knowing he was aware and not afraid. My husband gets home and confirms there's no one in the house. 
Earlier that day, my husband and I got into an argument, and I took my rings off, bad I know, and told him if he isn't okay with just one kid, he needs to marry someone else. We're struggling to conceive, and it's been really hard on me knowing he's desperate for another kid, and I'm okay if it never happens. I hadn't put my rings back on, and they were still on the dining room table by the door, right where the rings were. We have two and a half weeks left until we can move. It can't come fast enough. I'm afraid to be alone here. My sister and I were just talking on the phone about some strange things that had happened to us all throughout our time in our childhood home. I mentioned that I thought our home was haunted because our mother had taken a rock from Auschwitz and brought it back home. My working theory is that the rock itself carries energies or memories or spirits that are imprinted into the stone because of the horrific trauma within the walls of the concentration camp. My sister and I were sharing stories and experiences we had had that correlated with the time the rock had been in our family home, as well as correlated to the movement of the rock from room to room. I'm very aware that what my mom did was disrespectful and disturbed some energies. It's just taken a long time to put two and two together about our experiences and this object. I'm thinking of contacting a rabbi from a local synagogue to ask what the best way to go about this is. But if any of you have any ideas or information that could maybe help us out in our search, we'd really appreciate it. Just for reference, things we would experience in our house were physical pain unrelated to any obvious injury, mental health struggles and thoughts of ending our own lives, unexplained and unintelligible whispering or shouting, loud bangs with no discernible cause, strange sounds coming from underneath the floor in my bedroom, odd lights and anomalies in my sister's bedroom, and an atmosphere of constant unease or anxiety. Any ideas you all have would be greatly appreciated. We don't know how to go about this, but we definitely want to talk to our mom about having something done to cleanse the house and doing something with the rock that honors the spirits of the innocent dead while banishing any evil spirits connected to it. When I was about five or six years old, my mother, father, grandmother and I, went to this restaurant out in a semi-remote location. It has since been turned into a factory area, but at this time it was a log cabin type restaurant, back off the road in the woods. My father is a big talker. He'll pretty much have a really long conversation with anyone if they get to talking. He was closing up a conversation with this guy whom he went to high school. He hadn't seen in a long time. My mother, grandmother and I went outside to head onto the vehicle. I was getting a little tired because it was late, so my grandmother picked me up. She was holding me like a bear hug and I had my head on her shoulder and behind the restaurant, illuminated by a telephone pole slash streetlight, I saw a very tall figure. It was probably seven to eight feet tall, completely covered in blonde hair, sort of like Cousin It from Adam's family, but with more noticeable features. I said, Grammy, there's a monster. She turned around and saw it too. She started running towards the car. About this time, my mother saw it too. It didn't come towards us, it just turned and stared at us. We were all freaking out and then my dad came out of the building. He started running too because we were terrified. He didn't see it though, because once he came around, it took off into the woods, or at least out of eyesight. I know Bigfoot seems like a hard pill to swallow, but I saw something that night. I know I was a child, but we all saw it. My mom and I talked about it for the first time in years today because we drove past the place the restaurant used to be. And she described it exactly how I remember it. Since around 2014, I think, 
my brain doesn't process time well. I've had periodic experiences with something that I've been to calling the bathroom ghost. A vast number of these experiences have happened in or around the bathroom of places I lived or stayed at for some odd reason. The first encounter in what I think was 2014, I was at a friend's house where I often spent the night. I was in my sophomore or junior year of high school at the time. I always got a lot of strange feelings in that house. The air felt heavy and wrong in a way that I couldn't quite explain or articulate. In certain rooms I just couldn't be in because they would make me feel anxious for some reason. Anyway, one of these days I was staying over, I heard something strange that scared me half to death while I was in the bathroom. To the left of me was the door, to the right was the bathtub. On my right side, I heard a voice whisper, hey, clear as day, not far from my ear. It made me jump out of my skin and I recognized that it sounded exactly like my friend's voice. Now the speed with which I convinced myself it must have somehow just been the shower curtains shifting was honestly remarkable. But just as soon as I'd calmed myself down, it did it again. Hey, in that whispered tone, in my friend's voice. Needless to say, I got out of that room as fast as possible. Now I want to clarify that there was no way this could have actually been my friend. Reasons being that A, the voice came from the side of the room opposite the door, and there was no nearby room through which he could have spoken through the wall or something. Also, the voice wasn't muffled in any way. B, I could clearly hear my friend talking loudly to his mom in the living room, which was at least 30 feet from the bathroom door. Now I only experienced this once in that house, but here's why I think that whatever this thing was, it's followed me. In my first apartment with my friends, there was one notable circumstance of something happening in the bathroom. Now, this may not have been the same thing. It wasn't a voice which mimicked one of my friends. This was at least three to four years after the first experience. But myself and my two roommates were all sitting in the living room watching movies when we suddenly heard an odd sound from the bathroom. The hairdryer had turned itself on. It had been plugged in, so maybe it was just a spooky coincidence. But there hadn't been any sort of power surge to have triggered it and we were all pretty spooked. There were a couple of other interesting brief experiences in that apartment, but those are even less potentially related I think, so maybe those can be shared some other time. The most recent experience which truly makes me believe that this thing has followed me happened just last year. Not too long after moving into my current apartment. Once again, I was in the bathroom and I heard a voice come from the door. Clear as day, I heard my fiancé's voice say, Hello? Reasonably, I had assumed that they had came to the door to talk to me, which we do with some frequency, so I responded back, Hello? I didn't get any further response, so I started to get a bit nervous. My fiancé had been in the bed when I went to the bathroom, and the bedroom is just next door, but we have long since learned that we can't hear each other if one of us yells from the bed towards the bathroom. Hence why we sometimes stand outside the door to talk. I got out and, a bit nervous, asked if they had been trying to speak to me through the door. They were lying down where I left them when I came into the room and they very casually told me that no, they hadn't. Fully shaken now, I told them what I heard and they were a little amused like, ah, the bathroom ghost strikes again, which I did also find funny. They weren't making fun of me for being a little freaked out by any means. My fiancé is not the type of person who tries to scare other people by messing with them, so I know they weren't just playing a joke on me and acting like they had no idea what I meant. I'm an ICU nurse in France. The ICU ward is made of a long corridor providing access to four units of five rooms. One night shift, we talked about ghosts with co-workers and I stated that they do not exist at all. Around one hour later, a patient begins to spit blood as usual 
so I go with my co-worker to suck the blood out of his mouth with the suction unit. After five minutes of suction, the unit stopped the suction. I thought a blood clot was blocking the system. I followed the line to see the clot, and nothing to see except that the device is turned off. It's a key we have to put on or off. I tried to rationalize the event, but it's not an electrical device, so dysfunction is impossible. Strange feeling. My coworker told me that I should keep my mouth shut because someone has something to say to me. Later in the same night, two patients separated by two rooms told us they saw a woman in pink. We all wear white uniforms. No visitors are allowed after 10 p.m. and it was 3 a.m. Goosebumps. No more unsettling event for the rest of the night. The following day, nearly 3 a.m. in one room, the light constantly lit up by itself. Every time we turn the light off, it lights up when we exit the room. We could stay in the room. The light remains off, but as soon as we leave this room, the light turns on. After five light on, off, on, I turned off the light and said, enough, I've had it. And the light remains off. Three days later, near 3 a.m. again, we heard a huge crack on the unit door and the doors began to shake. We looked at each other, a new crack, new shaking. We trek through the windows and we can see no one. The corridor's lights remains off, motion sensor. Some weird shit happened later involving the death of a patient, but I can't say more for obvious purposes. This happened to me a few years ago, and it wasn't until today that I realized I may have been in some sort of danger. My husband and I were camping with two friends in a pretty remote area, deep in the mountains, on the shore of a small lake. Our first morning there, I decided to paddleboard to the other side of the lake. One thing about me, I have submechanophobia, which is fear of submerged objects in water. It doesn't affect me too badly. I love the water. But I get the heebie-jeebies when I see sunken boats, large fallen trees, massive boulders in the water, stuff like that. It's worse when I'm alone. I do pretty okay when other people are with me, and it has to be a large, clear body of water. Swimming pools, rivers, or lakes where the water isn't super clear don't bother me. So I go off by myself on my board. The lake is one big oval, so you can basically see everything from the shoreline. However, where we had set up camp, you couldn't see the whole lake, so I quickly lost sight of my husband. I started to freak out a little bit because I had immediately seen a big sunken tree. This is a high Sierra lake, so the water is crystal clear, but quickly turns black because of how deep it is. I told myself I was being silly and needed to get over my dumb phobia. I didn't really see anything else, but I decided to stay close to shore because usually that makes me feel better. But this lake doesn't really have a typical shore. It's all granite rock that just quickly and steeply drops into the water. I still don't really see much in the water, but I'm really starting to panic, which is weird. I have this overwhelming feeling to go back as fast as I can, but I think I'm just being dumb. I try to deep breathe because I really want to get to the other side where there is a waterfall. So I trudge on trying to calm myself and enjoy nature, yet still feeling like I should go back. As I'm paddling, I start to realize how alone I am. I keep looking around hoping to see a hiker, but I'm completely by myself. I try not to think about that because I'm almost to the waterfall and the view is gorgeous. As I get closer, I see there is an island, for lack of a better word. Just a large amount of granite that is fairly close to shore. There's a single plastic chair sitting on the island, which is funny, but slightly unsettling because it's such a weird thing to see so deep in nature. I'm still freaked, so I figured if I got off my board and onto the island, I would feel better because I would be on land and my phobia wouldn't bother me. I pull up my board and I start walking around, trying to enjoy the view, but I just can't. I feel terrified. The waterfall is so much louder now that I'm near it, 
And I realise if I were to scream, no one would hear me. My husband is the only person around for miles and he can't see or hear me and I'm terrified. I keep looking around because I feel like I'm being watched. I decided I can't take this. Even if it's just my stupid irrational fear, I have to get back as fast as I can. I get on my board and paddle down the centre of the lake rather than keep to the shore because it's quicker that way. It takes everything in me to do it. I can't shake the feeling I'm being watched and I feel so damn vulnerable in the centre of this deep blue lake. I'm shaking the whole way back, but as I'm getting closer to camp, relief sweeps through me. I get off the board and go see my husband. He happily asks me how it was and I can't talk. He asks me if I'm okay and I just start crying. I tell him I think my stupid phobia made me panic even though I didn't really see anything in the water. I feel totally insane and I'm just happy our friends aren't back from their hike to see me behaving so irrationally. We left later that day. Since then, I've become more open to the unknown. I was thinking about it and it suddenly hit me that maybe something was going on and it wasn't just my phobia, especially because I never even really saw anything that triggered it. I'm not sure if I just freaked because I was alone, the phobia, or something else. I guess I'll never know, but I'm curious if others have been in a similar situation or have any insight.